Hello and welcome back to the Fiat Ducato build series. I'm Naz and together with my wife Rosie we're turning this panel van into a tiny home on wheels. In today's video we're going to be showing you exactly how we laid our sump floor. Let's get right into it. So to start with I did a absolute load of research to try and figure out which way I wanted this floor to be built. A lot of people do it a lot of different ways but there tends to be just a few ways which the majority of people like to do it. We are going to be using battens as well as trying to make the floor as well insulated as possible and then our plywood going on top of the subfloor. So basically we started by sourcing our roofing battens which in our case we purchased from Wix and that basically allows us to have the 25mm roofing batten sitting on the high points of the van floor and then the 25mm Celotex insulation slots into the gaps between the grid format and then what you're left with is a completely even floor which you can then go ahead and secure your plywood to. So we cut the 25mm roofing battens to size using a mitre saw. Really straightforward, it was just a case of coming into the van, making our measurements and then just cutting the beams to size. We decided to go for our longest battens going widthways. So we had one right at the very front and then in relatively even intervals we'd have uh, widthways battens going right down to the back of the van which would then be accompanied by vertical ways battens going in between the widthways battens lead into that grid format which everyone seems to go for. This worked really well for us. We just cut the beams to size, laid everything down in place to make sure it all fit. We then were umming and ahhing in whether we should just glue the beams down or secure them in places with some screws right through the van floor to the outside. Again, as with anything, a lot of people do it a lot of different ways. In our case, we decided to just go for the gluing method. We used a instant grab adhesive on all the high points of the van floor where the beams would actually sit. And we let this dry overnight and we actually put weights on the beams so that it would stick really, really well before we decided to put any insulation on or put the floor on top. So we came back to the van the next day and I could probably swing off the beams to be honest. They were absolutely not going to go anywhere so we moved on to the insulation. This was an absolute... None of the videos online showed just how much of an annoying job doing the saddle tax is. It's relatively straightforward, there's no real problems with doing it. However. You've got a grid format, so each one of those squares, they've each got their individual measurements. So it was a tedious process coming back into the van, making the measurements, uh, and then cutting the saddle tacks and fitting it in place. Yeah. Even cutting the saddle tacks in general is quite a tedious task, but I found the best way to do it was just with a, a Stanley blade. Good morning, life. Good morning, sun. How are you? Skies above. Gee, it's great to be. We did the whole of the floor, which I would say maybe took three or four hours, but over the course of a couple of days. And once the whole floor was done, we then were to move on to actually vapor barrier in the floor with some uh, foil tape. Before this step, I was doing a lot of research in between doing the insulation, and I decided to add some additional battens right where the sliding door is, because that's going to be where the most traffic is. We're going to be stepping in and out of the van constantly in that area. And I also added two extra beams right at the very back where I assume our batteries are going to sit. Obviously they're quite heavy so I wanted a bit of extra support there. So after the insulation was in we used foil tape to seal up all the edges as well as do the wheel latches and also around the side vents of the van and also where the bulkhead used to be. So now it's a complete vapour barrier and no moisture can get through the wood or through the insulation. And we were chuffed with our work. 
I mean, it turned out really well. It was a tedious task, like I said, but it was, you know, once it was done, it was absolutely fine. It was then on to securing our plywood down. We bought two sheets of 12mm plywood. What we decided to do is just take the old floor out of the van, put it on our fresh sheets of ply, and trace around the edges. It was really, really straightforward, and we got it done within a few hours. After the pieces were cut, we decided to dry fit them in the van just to make sure they all lined up perfectly. And once we knew they did, we went about applying two coats of yacht varnish to either side of the wood just to protect it and to add to the longevity of the floor, uh, but to also make it relatively waterproof. That again took a day or two because we obviously had to let the uh, varnish dry but once that was done it was just a case of piece by piece securing each piece of plywood down into the van where it needed to go and after we did so we just went along where we knew all the battens were. We basically just drew a replica of the battens underneath. We think doing it this way when we come to secure the things down to the floor we're going to have you know visual guides as to where we can actually secure down. <laughs> People are going to make fun of my sisters. Oh no, come on. <laughs> And that was basically it. The floor went down absolutely fine. I'd say probably was, you know, the better part of three or four days worth of work uh, spread over the course of a couple of weeks. But now that it's in, ah, oh, it's it's massively changed the inside of the van. We're starting to get that, you know, nice wood smell in here, but it's not squeaking. It's obviously really secure and the floor has turned out brilliant. There's a creek. I am really trying to adapt the way I film these videos so the videos to come are going to be much more uh, in the moment than the ones I've been posting recently. We're starting on the ceiling and we've placed our order for all of our electrics so those videos will be coming very soon. So we hope you enjoyed this insight into how we fitted our subfloor. If you've got any questions or comments please feel free to drop them down below and if you're not subscribed already and if you're new around here then please feel free to. There's many many videos to come of the build process and when it's done our travels wherever we decide to take them. We'll see you in the next one.